are here from SATV, and we want to know a little bit about Ipswich Ale and the beers you've chosen to bring today. Uh, what would you like to know? Um, anything important, maybe why I want to drink these beers and what I should pick out of these beers. Well, we're a regional brewery, so uh, we're made very locally, uh, and we really like to say we want to support your local, local brewery. So, of course. We don't filter our beer. It's all natural, really good stuff. Um, we have a wide range of, uh, wide variety to choose from. Everything from a standard uh, English ale to uh, an IPA to our stout, our oatmeal stout. Great oatmeal stout, uh, really smooth. Tastes a lot like coffee, really, really tasty. We also have another label called Stone Cat uh, that has a little bit more specialty beers. We make an Oktoberfest under that label. Pumpkin Ale, which we have available today. We make an IPA under that label as well, which is really tasty. We have a winter ale coming out uh, shortly. Uh, and uh, we're, we're a local business. Uh, so we hope that everybody enjoys the product today. I've had many Ipswich Ales myself. I've had the joy of being able to party at the Ipswich Ale Brewery, and the truck with the taps on it is the best. It's my favorite. We got the whole line of Bands out front, too. So I support Ipswich Ale, definitely. Um, I would like to try, do you have any oatmeal stout today? Actually, we hope to be opening uh, a new brewery come uh, the spring, really? uh, which is right down the street in Ipswich from our brewery that we have now. We should have a pub open there, uh, and we should be doing tours and tastings, which we can't do at our current facility. Wow. So if everybody supports the product, we can continue to grow, more people can enjoy it. Sure, why not? If people like it, expand. Oatmeal Stout is one of my favorite beers. Oh, that's very, very good. It almost has a hint of, like, coffee and, like, a very dark... It's, like, better than Guinness. It's, like, Guinness, but better. <laughs> I like that. That was good. Can I try the Stone Cat Pumpkin also? If you like the stout, you like I love the stout, yeah. Not too much pumpkin spice. A lot of brewers make the pumpkin ale with just a lot of that nutmeg and all spice. And this is just, it's beer with yeah. a little bit of pumpkin. You don't want to add too much pumpkin flavor. Same with blueberry beers. You want just enough blueberry, you don't want too much blueberry. It's good, right? Thank you. That is very good. Last year, um, we tried like all these meads at one of these festivals, and I ended up buying like a couple bottles of mead afterwards. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good luck with uh, the new place. How is it? It's good. It's good. I had some vegetarian chili at um, the lobster shanty a week ago, and I asked them to put meat in it, and they said no. But they assured me that the veggies would taste like meat. And that reminds me of this, because the veggies kind of give a slight meat flavor, almost that I'm eating meat, even though there's no meat on any of these pizzas. Okay. And those are my thoughts on that. <laughs> TV and um, we just wanted to know a little bit about your mead. Well, mead is the world's oldest fermented beverage, and uh, uh, we import meads from South Africa, Denmark, and England. And basically, you're fermenting honey, so you have this inherent sweetness. And then, what do you do against it? Uh, these meads are all different examples of, of blending and added ingredients. Uh, for instance, the ones from Denmark. One is made with hibiscus and hops. One is blended with aquavit, which is a caraway liqueur. And one uses fresh ginger root. Uh, from England, we have Lorgashal. And two examples we have here, one is methaglin, which is an ancient spiced style of mead. And the other is Tower of London, which is a mead that's we blended with scotch. And this is a South African mead. Uh, this, the, the gentleman who owns this meter is a, is a bad on. beekeeper. He can tell you exactly what's on the bees' minds. Uh, he, he's amazing. And this meat is made with different herbs and spices and also rose petals. 
And this is uh, something that's not like the others. This is Saison Dupont. It's a uh, another beer that I work with, and it's a Belgian farmhouse ale. Okay. Uh, I would like to have this one. I'll try that as well. Ginger? Okay. Thank you. I'm a big fan of ginger root. It must be Fred. And cheers. It's going to be on tap, I think, at Jacob Ward's in Austin. The only author is the Debbie. It's such a small Very good. Mm -hmm. Strong. strong. Very strong. A lot of flavor. Good. Very good. Um, Viking's blood? Viking's blood. I think our pumpkin stuff's on draft right now overall. This one is blended with aqua heat, and this is a uh, 20. What is aqua heat? Aqua heat is a caraway liqueur. Uh, yep. It's a dark pepper. Uh, I like that one. Now, the best way to drink meat is out of the skull of your enemy, but those are tough to come by. <laughs> or out of meat. That's how the Vikings used to do it. I actually went to Germany, and they all had meat horns to drink. Thank you very much. Hey, hey, from right. SA TV, are we doing an interview? Back again, back again. Fisherman's Ale, one of my favorite beer companies, straight out of Gloucester. Um, talk to us, tell us some things. Well, all right, we brought two different styles this time. Normally we have our ale, our brew, which is our American Amber Lager, and our IPA, but today we brought our New England Microbrew Championship beer, the Pumpkin Stout. Just got best beer in Maryland with that one. Sold out, all the bottles have gone. And we have a special beer that we made for Barcade down in New York City, Williamsburg, called the Dunkel Bice, Dark Hefeweizen. It's a banana clove from the yeast. You can only get that here at the brewery and maybe at Jacob Wurst in Boston. German bar down there. Pumpkin stouts over at Gulu Gulu. So pretty much you guys should sample some. Got some of our hops here for you too. We showed you guys that last year. Got all our Simcoe right here. That's where all the magic happens. The Lupulin glands. Very good stuff. But that's pretty much what we brought. Just two seasons. I would like to try the special beer. The Dunkel Weiss. Double that order, please. Just Dunkel Weiss. <laughs> Thank you. Other thing is, too, don't forget, the whole idea is all three of us who run this brewery, we all used to be fishermen. Every time you sell our beer or buy our beer, buy a shirt, DVD, you're helping unemployed fishermen. Saving the ocean. Last time I checked, the ocean's kind of a big deal, I, I think. It's, it's true, it's true. But we're right down Gloucester, Massachusetts, Commercial Street, free tours, free samples. It's a good time. Pub's going to be open up in about this time next month. Well, thank you very much. We all love Fisherman's Brew here in Salem. Of course. Keep coming to our festivals. This is all the beer I got for the right now. That's why my samples have gotten smaller. Well, they're all me. He just did my boss, the head brewer. He's down in Pennsylvania right now in Philly for the first ever Logan Stout. I'm not sure. It's the first to count, so we're thinking about that there right now. Awesome. I hope it's going on. But yeah, our bottles are going to be down there, so look at which one do you have? Fisherman's Brew is definitely one of my favorite beers. Very good. Very, very good. As I was saying, our bassist used to work there and bring us home cases. I used to love that. <laughs> Rove, thank you, Rove. All right. Just want to start out by saying that um, this place is packed, and obviously you've done a very successful job. Thank you. Would you like to add any words about today? Uh, well, this is our second annual Harvest Festival, and just wanted to. Um, Thank all of our wine reps and beer companies for coming out and for all the locals that uh, decided to make it through the busy streets to join us. And um, if you missed it, you have to join us next year. It's always the 
uh, third Thursday in October. Thanks. Well, thank you very much for throwing these. And um, Salem's a great town. I used to live in Beverly, and they never did anything like this. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, of course.